what was the biggest surprise in the job? So you've been in the job, you've always followed the economy. Is there something that surprised you? Well, I've been uh, as an economic minister of Spain for just one month, so I'm very brand new. That makes you a grizzled veteran. <laughs> well, uh, it's, been, I'm, it's still brand new in the position, but I'm being surprised by many things. I mean, the intensity of the European debate. I just uh, joined a, a train which is in full speed. Uh, we have, as you know, uh, uh, prospects to find uh, uh, important agreements in the month of June. Uh, the debate in Europe is at full speed. But then I have in my own uh, ministry, in the area of responsibility, many interesting things like life science, which is an important, and research, which is an important part of the policies of the government. And this is, of course, uh, extremely interesting. The discussion of the budget of Spain happened to uh, coincide exactly <laughs> with the first weeks of my uh, stance Easy. as a ministry. So the AC things, as you mentioned, and all of them coincide at the same time. So it's been a busy time, but a very important uh, uh, time for Spain okay. and for Europe. Do, do you find there's commonality in the G20? Are, are a lot of G20 ministers rallying against uh, people asking for the end of globalization? Well, I think that there is a broad consensus. Uh, if you ask me there's a full consensus, maybe I wouldn't go that far. But there's a broad consensus on many of the issues that have been discussed. First of all, protectionism. I think that there is a very, very wide consensus among our colleagues that we have to avoid escalation in the matters of protectionism. There is a perception that uh, the sun is shining in the global economy. But there are underlying vulnerabilities, and we have to be aware. Uh, in many of the areas, we see normalization of monetary policies, including in Europe, of course. And we have to be prepared for that. Uh, we still have an economy which is full of debt. So uh, I would say that these uh, basic elements are part of the consensus that I find when discussing with my colleagues. May I say that there is also consensus uh, among my colleagues to see that the Spanish economy is doing well, if you permit me. That is also a part that, uh, well, frankly, I can tell that all my colleagues that's are That's where I wanted to go to. In this atrium, six, seven, eight years ago, Francine Lacroix and I noticed the panic, the sweat, the crisis. And what has been noted is Spain led the way to greater stability. As you look back five years, six years, seven years, what we would call the pixie dust. Yes. What was the pixie dust of Spain that allowed for you to recover so promptly? Well, I think there have been uh, uh, not just one reason, but uh, uh, a few reasons. Uh, if, if you want to put a summary to what happened in Spain, I would say that the main uh, economic reforms that were undertaken in 2012-2017 are which are, are underpinning the current recovery. Particularly, we had a, a, a change in the law uh, regarding the budget, mm -hmm. and uh, that created a path for fiscal consolidation, which has been extremely important. Then we have uh, a banking reform. Uh, we have a very intense banking reform. The banking landscape has been completely transformed in Spain as opposed to the last uh, six years when you were mentioning. And finally, we have labor market reform. So you put the three together. Mm -hmm. That has called for this uh, uh, transformation. We talk about Europe valuations and we talk about Germany, the Netherlands. Maybe we talk about countries struggling far more than a successful Spain. Do you have in your head an optimal euro valuation? I would for not. Spain? Uh, I have would, you done that in the last few I would four not weeks? comment on the uh, euro valuation. But next month you will, right? But what I will tell you, what I will tell you, is that despite the uh, ev evaluation of a euro, uh, the Spanish export, particularly the Spanish export, are outperforming not only the uh, European or the euro area mm. average of export, but the world trade as such. So we are gaining actually weight. Spain is gaining ground uh, mm. in the world trade, mm. and this is extremely part of the recovery. Let me say, if you compare the Spanish economy today, when it was was uh, six, seven years ago. There has been a reduction of eight points of GDP of construction. We used to be a country that had like, this real estate uh, boom and then a lot of construction, a lot of jobs uh, linked with construction. This has disappeared, essentially. And now these eight, ten points are exports. So we have moved from this non-tradable economy right. to a tradable economy. And this is underpinning the, the uh, present recovery. I mean, the, the Spanish budget bill was, was, is difficult. Will it get passed next week? Well, it, not actually this week, it is a bit more of time. But let me say that the main features of the Spanish budget are very important. First of all, reduction in deficit. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, really have an ambitious target for reduction in deficit. Uh, the consolidation of the growth. We will be growing more than the European average for the fourth year in a row. Among the largest European economies, Spain is the leading performer uh, this year will be, uh, as I mentioned, for the fourth year in a row. And then there is this social aspect, particularly regarding pensions. There have been some social groups that have been left behind mm -hmm. because of the uh, economic crisis, and we try to convey to them. 
So in political terms, I think there is no reason for the rest of the political groups not to support. We are still confident that this agreement will be found. Minister, we at Bloomberg Surveillance from London and from New York had yes. wonderful coverage of the crisis in Barcelona, the domestic politics of Spain. Give us an update on how the nation is coming together after the challenges that you saw in Barcelona. Well, the nation, as you mentioned, is coming together around the Constitution and around the constitutional order. Spain is a fully modern and advanced democracy around uh, our very, uh, I would say, respected uh, constitution. Uh, the polls, the latest polls, including from the Catalan government itself, show that the support from uh, independence is diminishing, and is diminishing quite fast, actually. Uh, we see that in terms of the economic situation and the business situation, the financial situation, uh, actually we see a clear recovery uh, uh, in Catalonia after difficult months at the end of the year. And we are calling for the Catalan government to be formed, to have a majority in parliament and to go back to normal relations with the national government. I think that this is an extremely important economic area in Spain. It's around 20 percent of the Spanish GDP and we want normal relations to be reestablished as soon as possible with the new Catalan government. So uh, I, we want this to happen. And uh, uh, let me say that with the current existing data, we see that the business situation in Catalonia is recovering pretty much. Um, Minister, if we talk about European integration, so Mariano Rajoy likes euro bonds, he likes a European budget, and a finance minister. What will Germany likely say or you know, push, push through, and what should the priorities be? Our priorities is essentially the completion of the missing parts of the uh, economic and monetary union. We have made a tremendous advance in the last four years, probably more than people actually realize. We have a single supervisory system, we have a single bank resolution system, but there's still some missing parts. Namely, we need a, a common uh, deposit guarantee scheme. I mean, the Americans have this for uh, 70, 80 years, but we lack. We still have national systems. We need a backstop for the uh, resolution system to really function in times of uh, stress. These are missing parts. So these are our priorities. We think that uh, uh, um, the Spanish government, and we will publish next week a, a paper on that, we need a kind of fiscal stabilization mechanism that we think will complement the monetary policy, particularly in times of uh, shocks and times of but crisis. Will we get it in our lifetime? Will we even get a banking union <laughs> in our cynical lifetime? of you. It must be at the end of the IMF meetings. I am seen cynical. As you may uh, see, I'm a Europhile. We are used to have step-by-step -step process. We used to have difficulties. We will need to have a quarreling between ourselves, arguing between ourselves. At the end of the day, sometimes at the very latest moment, agreements are found. This is the typical European way. So in this sense, I think that uh, we are optimistic. We are clearly pushing for a European integration. You will find in Spain one of the countries which is pushing more for European integration. Why? Because our population is clearly in favor of the uh, more European integration. And we think that we benefit from this in the historical sense. This may be off your remit, but I'm going to take a risk here because you've only been doing this for one month. There's going to be a new ECB president here in a year and a half or so. And there's a raging debate that we observe in London and New York about, well, should it be German, should it be this, or should it be that? What does Spain feel about the leadership of the ECB and how Spain could fit into that equation? What I will tell you is that uh, as of uh, June, July, the ECB will have a brand new vice president from Spain, which is my predecessor, which is an extremely talented and respected economist, and he will make an impact. Uh, he will leave his mark in the working of the ECB. So he'll be Apart in that position that, and be able to move right up. Well, he will, he will leave his mark and his talents <laughs> at the service of the works of the ECB. Apart from that, if you expect me to comment, I will not at this stage. <laughs> Minister, on Bankia, it has to be fully privatized by 2019. Will that, will that deadline stick? Uh, Bankia will be fully pri privatized. Uh, we don't think that there is any role for the government to be in the, involved in banking, and that's a clear the government policy. Second, we want to be sure that the uh, money and the support that was given by the taxpayers to the uh, rescue, let's say, of the depositors of the banks are uh, to the maximum extent possible recovered. So these are the two pillars of our policy. In the framework of these two pillars, we will advance. But um, uh, mind that uh, Bankia will be privatized because we do not see any role of public uh, uh, owned banks.